So let me start by sharing with you from the perspective of, of academia, from the perspective of uh, a multicultural uh, educational center, what, what can we learn from uh, the recent crisis that has affected actually all industries and many countries? First, uh, eternal growth is tantalizing, is actually a fake, and the economy has a cyclical nature. This is something that we, all of us, probably suspected, but uh, some years ago, uh, many people didn't actually realize. And let me share with you this quote from one of our colleagues, uh, one of my professors, who wrote very recently analyzing the crisis that in 2007, the concept of risk was almost non-existent. If you actually check the newspapers, if you check the literature, you'll probably share this idea. Very recently, risk was not in the literature, in the common dialogue of everyday finance or everyday management. So, if you actually look at uh, the book of Genesis in the Bible, we uh, may find one of the first uh, theories of economic cycles, when Joseph interprets the Pharaoh's uh, dream about the seven lean cows and the seven fat cows. So, one of the first lessons that we have to learn from the crisis is that growth is not eternal, and that uh, very uh, big increases in growth are actually followed by sharp drops in growth. And we probably need to uh, realize that management has to play a big role, not just in the field of business, but also in the larger societal environment. And then let me share with you something that I firmly believe in, which is that when we talk about the ontology, I mean the principles of good management, when we talk about business ethics, we are not talking about anything different from good management practices. Let's not uh, do strange things. Talking about uh, business ethics is not trying to bring in some sort of dogmatic corporate theory or doing strange things or going, you know, uh, somewhere. It's actually being good managers and applying the good principles of management. So when we talk about sustainability, we don't talk about anything different from applying the good rules of management. So, you know that triathlon is composed of swimming, cycling, and uh, running, racing. And what I propose is that uh, there's a triathlon of leadership. And this triathlon is composed of uh, experience, talent, and education. It's like uh, the triathlon. You have to practice these three sports in order to become a good leader, in order to develop all those virtues that I'm going to talk about later. But do the leaders resist uh, these thoughts when you talk about what is uh, pivotal for leadership in the future? Absolutely. In fact, you know, the grades of those courses in the humanities get uh, sometimes higher scores than the traditional courses in finance. And this is not because the professors in finance are bad. I mean, they're very good. But they, uh, participants realize about the need of becoming well-rounded, more cosmopolitan. You know, our job is not uh, about uh, applying formulas, is not about uh, projecting things or planning things. It's about leading people. And in order to lead cross-cultural teams, you need to more know about uh, the culture of other uh, uh, regions and continents. So I insist that by reading the classics, uh, you'll probably learn more than by reading many of the books uh, in management. You're in charge of one of the most successful MBAs in the world, and I know sustainability has become more, let's say, pivotal in lots of business schools. And today we remind about this all the time because of our beautiful tree here on stage. But, but could you try and explain us how do you as a leader think sustainability in the core of your business? How do you approach this? Right. L let me answer, you know, very bluntly or very directly. I don't think sustainability is different to good management. Uh, when we talk about ethical management, sustainable management, and add whatever ad adjective you want, we are talking about good management, applying the good rules of management, taking uh, sound decisions, respecting the interests of your sh stakeholder groups, trying to fulfill uh, the demands of your customers and your clients. 
So good management is equivalent, is synonymous to sustainable management. This is what we are now uh, implementing at our school, and uh, this is the case at many other places. Of course, respect for the environment should be part of the equation uh, of all management practices, but the same applies to respect uh, for the social uh, landscape where you work in, or respecting the rights of your uh, workers or your clients. So this applies across the board to all corporations, and we need to revisit, in many cases, what we are doing in order to increase uh, wealth uh, and value in our environment. How do you see uh, the challenges and the demand of leading skills changing in these years? Including the governments. Uh, you need to treat uh, governments and regulators in a very special way, in a constructive way, as I was saying before. I know that a challenge that keeps you awake at night, I read this somewhere, is uh, the ability to attract and retain true talent, both from school, for your schools, but also for, for the business environment, especially in Europe. What is the greatest challenge right now for all of us? And I f if I say China, you know where I'm heading. You mean for managers? For managers and also for you know, professors for your schools. There's like a brain drain going on. Well, of course, uh, the main challenge is uh, reinventing capitalism. I mean, how we reinvent the way our structures are designed, how we can continue producing value, social value, and value for uh, our respective stakeholders. So this is the big challenge, because we realize that many of the structures uh, don't work in the same way as uh, two centuries ago. We live longer, we have uh, more needs, and we need to design different structures.